Professor James de Toulouse was born in 1949 in Crestena, a small town in southwestern Greece. He arrived in Australia in July 1954, aged four and a half, with his parents and older sister Anastasia. Although destined for the sugarcane fields of northern Queensland via transit in the Camp Bonagilla, the family was able to divert to Melbourne where they already had contacts and managed to settle there. The family shared accommodation in houses with other migrant families in the inner suburbs of Melbourne and James's parents managed to obtain factory and semi-skilled positions. James attended multiple inner Melbourne suburban primary schools as the family's accommodation changed frequently. He matriculated from University High School in 1966 with honours and had a scholarship to the University of Melbourne. There he studied medicine and graduated in 1972 with honours, prizes in medicine, surgery and paediatrics and exhibitions in medicine and pathology. As a junior doctor at the Royal Melbourne Hospital, James became interested in cardiology and eventually trained as a heart and lung surgeon. Since then, he has performed over 10,000 major heart operations and has helped train over 40 young cardiac surgeons, both in Australia and overseas. James has conducted substantial research too, which has led to over 150 book chapters and journal publications. On a personal level, James is married with one daughter. Although his parents have now passed, fortunately they were able to witness their three children and four adult grandchildren obtain 20 university degrees between them and contribute significantly to the Australian community in the areas of arts and culture, social work, education, law, medicine and philanthropy. Oh, well, I, I remember coming to Australia, and certainly part of it's on, on the boat. Uh, I was four and a half. We came in 1954. And I have very vivid memories, in fact, of uh, passing through the Suez Canal uh, and all the uh, boat vendors coming up on the side of the boat, uh, really colourful and throwing up uh, fruit and different garments, which then you'd throw money back down. I also remember a little bit uh, in Colombo, being uh, sent uh, around the, the, uh, the streets on little rickshaws uh, running around there, so it was terrific. But I do remember some bad things on the, on the, on the voyage as well, and that was uh, very, very calamitous seas. Uh, a burial at sea, which, uh, an old man died, and I, I have vivid memories of uh, the person being in a, uh, you know, an appropriate, uh, I guess, a shroud and, and uh, sack, for a better word, and, and being buried at sea. And, and I do remember I, I uh, had measles uh, during uh, the trip and I remember being in the ship's hospital which was like a, a big sort of open ward with lots of kids uh, and uh, being visited. Uh, so then when we came to Australia we weren't allowed off the ship which was called the Anna Salen. Uh, we came in July 1954 and uh, we were sort of almost like a Schindler's List type of memory. We were taken off the ship and onto a train uh, and we were taken off to Bonagilla uh, because at that time uh, we were destined uh, for the uh, sugarcane farms up in uh, uh, Queensland uh, and this was a sort of like a staging post uh, to go there. So we went to um, Bonagilla and I do remember on the train, uh, the long train journey in those days, um, uh, my mother crying because all she could see was sort of uh, land and sheep and no, no people and uh, you know, no, no towns, villages, whatever, uh, quite unlike Greece. I have vivid memories of, of the uh, camp at Bonagil. I remember the awful smell of those white pork sausages that <laughs> they cook for everybody. Uh, and I do remember the, the Nissan huts uh, which, uh, which were there. Uh, but we weren't there for that long because my father and two other guys went AWOL and uh, they uh, hitchhiked into Albury and then got a taxi from Albury to Melbourne uh, where they knew people. So they got a taxi rather than getting the train because they knew they'd be picked up if they <laughs> went on the train. So, we, uh, so they came, got jobs and, and uh, after about a week or so they, they called for us and we were allowed to come to Melbourne and, and here we are.
it was quite difficult because uh, because when we came, uh, there were, uh, my sister who was uh, about nine, I was four and a half, and my mother was about six months pregnant with my brother John, and in fact. Uh, it was the best move they made for many reasons, obviously one of them being me <laughs> sitting here uh, doing this interview, but, but uh, both my mother and my younger brother John would have died if they had not come to Australia because uh, in November 54, you know, some four months after we came, uh, my mother uh, was uh, uh, delivered or had uh, delivered John and um, she had to have an urgent cesarean section and John was quite a big baby and uh, in, in you know, sort of rural Greece she definitely would not have survived. You know, he, was, he was about 10 pounds or 5 kilos and uh, it was a very difficult uh, issue and uh, mum spent about a month in hospital. Uh, so uh, she wouldn't have uh, actually survived in Greece, uh, obviously neither would have John. Both my parents worked uh, and uh, so they, they tended to uh, complement or supplement the way they worked. My dad mainly worked during the day and my mother worked uh, on the evening shifts at different factories. Uh, so my older sister took care of us, uh, but, but it didn't seem that money itself was a, an issue. I think we uh, were well clothed. My mother was always very proud about uh, what she, uh, uh, she bought for us. And, um, uh, and in fact, that, that sort of came home more recently when uh, uh, sort of a, a, uh, some friends of the family came in and she asked them if they'd bought all their stuff at the Opportunity Shop uh, and labelled one of the, those people Mr Opportunity. Uh, but uh, she was very proud and, and never bought any secondhand stuff and always bought nice stuff. So, so in, in, we didn't really um, uh, seem that money was an issue, of, but of course they had to work hard, but they were sort of frugal, but they did spend wisely and appropriately and mainly for our own yeah, good health and, uh, and uh, education. No, I, I never really felt an outsider. I, I must say uh, uh, that never was, was part of the, the upbringing, uh, both in primary school and, and also um, in, in high school. As I told you, I went to university high school and uh, uh, at that stage it was a selective uh, school, uh, but it was very uh, uh, multicultural. The kids uh, from you know, the Armenians, Greeks, Italians, uh, Jewish kids, a lot of Aussies, uh, and uh, I don't think anyone felt, felt different. And, and in fact, in some ways it was incredible because uh, I know uh, we had uh, a, a couple of people that, that actually were playing test cricket for Australia <laughs> in, in our cricket team, so it was pretty hard to get a Guernsey with some, some of the sporting teams. But um, no, I, I think the, the education was really great and, um, uh, and there was no real uh, feeling of being different. Not that I ever consciously felt, no. I, I think uh, it might have been by virtue of the environment, because obviously it was in a suburban Melbourne predominantly, uh, so we weren't out in Kew or Hawthorne or South Yarra or Turak. Uh, uh, so uh, I must say we never really felt it, and certainly in, in playing, we used to play in the streets and uh, down the local parks and uh, go out and the movies and you know, all the usual thing, go the Saturday afternoon matinees at the Westgarth Theatre and and have a great time, but no, I think uh, ethnicity or being different was uh, never uh, anything uh, that I felt consciously. We moved in both, both environments. We moved in, in the Greek environment, obviously, but also moved in a very local or Anglo environment, for a better word. Uh, and uh, no, we've, we've always felt very, very comfortable, both in those years and subsequently. It was only one time there was a, there was a teacher uh, that, that was sort of, uh, we were mucking around in, in a class uh, and uh, one, one, in fact it was a vice principal came in and, and uh, for some reason singled a few of us out and sort of uh, said well maybe we should go, go back to where we came from. But that was the only incident and, and I must say at the time we thought he was a bit of an idiot and that was about it and uh, we didn't really uh, sort of feel much uh, about that, so it was, it was I guess, the one incident in, in nearly uh, 
sort of uh, 60 years of being, <laughs> being in Australia. It was, it was really the other way. We, we were very much encouraged to, to mix it in, in, in the society. We, we were encouraged to uh, go to all the educational events, all the excursions, uh, all the social events related to, to the school. Uh, even my sister, who was, who was older, uh, so she was encouraged to yeah, uh, get the, or find uh, and develop really good friendships uh, with whoever she liked, but, but, uh, but being exclusively or predominantly Greek was, was never um, uh, an issue uh, for my parents. I think their main objective to coming to Australia, particularly from my mother's side, uh, and motivation was really to you know, give us a better opportunity in education and they felt that education would really be in the, uh, in the broader uh, Australian community, not, not by being sort of uh, in, in ghettos or, or being uh, you know, specifically sort of uh, aligned with a particular heritage group or whatever. So, uh, so the only thing that we did that uh, I certainly didn't like, <laughs> and I still don't, uh, was uh, having to go to Greek school. Uh, so I resented that because I'd have to go to Greek school uh, in those days uh, twice a week, you know, from about sort of 5 to 7 p.m. in the city in Burke Street at the Greek community centre there. And uh, so we'd hop on the tram and go down. And um, so very independent, we could do what we like. Uh, but um, go to Greek school and I thought the teachers were awful. They, they were really uh, uh, pretty masochistic and uh, not very nice and I hated it. So as a result, I... Uh, one of the things I've lived by is that I think uh, I should inflict on my daughter uh, what I didn't like, so she never had to go to Greek school. <laughs> so. Once it was obvious, without sounding conceited, <laughs> once it was obvious that, that you know, I, I sort of could do well at school, you know, I was really encouraged. I was encouraged to sit for scholarships by the teachers. I was encouraged to go to events, uh, I was uh, encouraged to um, consider, you know, options beyond, you know, sort of the, the, the usual. Uh, I certainly uh, experienced a um, encouragement to, to really fulfil my potential rather than being discouraged because of um, different community values. I've really enjoyed my Greek heritage and I've really liked it. Uh, and I call on it many times. I, I, I love the history. I've uh, studied uh, a, a bit of the, the Greek, the ancient Greek literature. I go to Greece every second year and go to the, all the sites. So, so I really love the, uh, the heritage uh, and I, I really love the music, particularly through the sort of 50s and uh, 60s um, and gone to many, many of the concerts, both in Greece and here. So I, I, I really, uh, and I really love going to Greece for, for the just atmosphere. Uh, but uh, so I, I use it uh, in that sense, but, but not, not as part of, um, you know, sort of the, 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 the bigger being. I, I sort of use it as a, um, a, a cult, something of cultural interest, part of my ident identity, but, um, you know, I, I really don't think it's a, a very strong part of me. You know, and I'm not quite sure that's a, a very <laughs> politically correct answer, but, but that's, that, that's how I feel.